even a corporate cricketer who has no future in cricket just to have that bragging rights on a sunday <laughs> night he practices 4 to 5 hours a week cricket is a religion in this country and uh, there will be more number of people playing the sport the footfalls playing the sport is going to increase exponentially in the years to come india will have 4 to 5 international teams if possible still that little bit of hyper thing is there that is dinesh karthik you can't take that out of him and he's an out and out cricket nut he can talk and live and breathe cricket 24 hours mm-hmm. by any chance if you go for shopping with him you can be rest assured that your pockets will be empty <laughs> he will ensure that you buy truck loads of things for your own self <laughs> and he can sell ice to eskimos <laughs> if you're an indian sports fan you'd know that the 2010s decade was the one where indian cricket evolved into appreciating and celebrating the role of fitness in the sport virat kohli himself attributes this change to today's podcast guest mr basu shankar was the head of strength and conditioning for the indian cricket team when virat kohli went through his own evolution and because kohli was the captain this culture of fitness took over the entire indian cricket team and because indian cricket is at the forefront of culture in our country Personally, even Beer Biceps is a beneficiary of that cultural revolution that we saw in our country because I started off as just a fitness channel. Basu Shankar has been a dream guest on my podcast for the longest time and he's finally here on the Ranveer Show today. Before I let you slip into the episode, make sure you follow us on Spotify. TRS is a Spotify exclusive, which means that every episode is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. Lots of anecdotes from the world of cricket. lots of sports science on this one so whether you're a budding athlete whether you're a fitness freak or even if you just enjoy informative conversations centered around biology you're going to absolutely love basu shankar on the ranveer show Basu Shankar sir welcome to the Ranveer show so much to ask you so much to unpack you were one of my original guests that i had on my list when this podcast began thank you for being here sir you've done really well for yourself ranveer and right. what a place and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here no no thank you sir um you know i have a lot of questions related to fitness health sports conditioning and of course honestly i'm a huge cricket fan uh i'm a huge fan of the world of fitness science and that's what this podcast is for me uh want to learn a lot more about two of my favorite subjects so i don't even know where to begin how do you let these two worlds kind of converge in your eyes i mean first of all uh, i was an athlete myself uh, okay. ranveer it all started way back my mother was an athlete my mother was a sprinter so i think one led to another mm. so when my athletic career just concluded i was looking for something more i wanted a bigger bite or something and i didn't want to be a regular run of the mill coach i wanted to be something very different i wanted to explore into the world of exercise science and strength and conditioning and back in the 90s when i wanted to do this a lot of people thought i was off my head yeah this culture of weights and sports conditioning generally i think came in in the early 2010s i would say i mean it it got real serious uh around the 2007 8 people were always into the gym and bodybuilding and all those things the thing of sports conditioning specific training that so called functional training so many other things came probably after 2006 7 and uh, it's still growing mm. this is still a very growing industry and i would say there's a lot of scope for this industry and the next 30 40 years is going to be very critical and it's going to still it's like a stock market you buy now mm. you're going to get the returns 30 years later yeah yeah and you know uh, the people best people can definitely jump into this industry now yeah the best thing is you actually see it in the mainstream as well um you know especially in urban centers all over the world people are very into the scientific aspects of fitness absolutely um you know be it be it measuring your own heartbeat be it measuring your own glucose levels i think fitness science has reached that point in mainstream where people want to kind of dive within their own bodies from a scientific perspective one end i think a lot of processed food and inorganic stuff another end you have seen extremists talking about only about organic food <laughs> aura ring ultra human and all these objective measures there's a good fight going on i think the fitness aficionados are moving towards objective numbers and they want to measure everything they want to analyze everything they want to hire the best experts to get their 
body is in great shape and uh, they want to use science to the fullest and to the point where they feel that even i spoke to a director usually a film director he mm. says vetri maran he is a very very famous director in chennai he says if you want to become a very good film director you need to be supremely fit that's where the world is today mm. and i think anybody who wants to take up fitness as a career if it is your passion jump into it and you will get rich dividends out of this yeah 100% so is it fair to say someone like kohli now see his fitness is at the center of his career he probably knows enough about fitness to become a coach himself absolutely i, I i'm right in saying that right? absolutely okay he knows his body in and out mm um i'm asking you this from my own perspective because when i went vegetarian i had to really adjust kind of my routine uh, my recovery period all that what happened when he went vegetarian as his coach did you have to like adjust a lot of obviously things? i mean i mean uh, the human body does not know whether you are a vegetarian or non vegetarian hmm. it only identifies as macronutrients and micronutrients we need to find the balance hmm. and uh, you know it very well that uh, protein is subdivided into amino acids you make sure that you give the right food so that you cover all the amino acids mm. you don't want incomplete proteins in your system yeah. and you need to have the good fats in your system and uh, so we had to make adjustments and like fish to water he took to it and whenever he needs to make any adjustments and all I have, we all have a conversation and he'll always have pertinent questions once he's convinced there's no looking back uh do you follow other sports yeah, of course uh, do you follow basketball by any chance big time i'm a nut Oh wow. I'm a basketball oh. nut. Okay. And I was very upset this year <laughs> <laughs> that James and his team did yeah, not qualify. You're a LeBron fan. And then I had to go with Boston Celtics yeah. because I've seen enough of Stephen Curry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. Uh, exactly <laughs> what is it? Uh, Jason Statham okay. I, I yeah. followed. But I think give him, give him another couple of years and he's going to He'll be win a show stopper. Yeah. Uh and he's he, already won. I will I mean he will get a ring. Yeah, hundred um, percent. That team also has some kind of solid uh, foundation. They play some solid defense, and uh, I'm a proper NBA nut. Okay. I lost both my knees for basketball. Oh, I have ACL tears in both my legs. Playing recreational basketball for almost ten, fifteen years to the point where uh, when I got married, my wife thought I was off my head three thirty back in the nineties. Mm. Any Chicago Bulls match. <laughs> I will go crazy. Oh, okay. Uh, biggest uh, Jordan fan, mm. and that time Phil Jackson and this three peats. Wow, yeah. it was another time. Wow. Okay. I again just so much to unpack here, sir. Uh, we'll we'll get back to talking about health. Let's switch to cricket again now. <laughs> Let's talk about one of the country's all-time greatest heroes, M S Dhoni. I'm sure, like you know, you've had your experience working with him as well. What's his kind of fitness regime like? So how's he sustained for so long? I am sure he's someone who has a lot of natural muscle mass. He's always been someone who's physically strong. He you... amazed me. I mean, I saw him as Dhoni. I mean, I I got into the team in 2015. Of course, I've seen him before too. He's a hill boy. Mm. I think he's a pahadi. They call him pahadi. Yeah, a strongly built guy. Mm. I mean, Rishabh Pant is the same. Okay, uh, Pawan Nigi is the same. I think uh, this Anuj Rawat is the same. Mm. It's for IPL now. I think these guys who come from the hilly regions are naturally very, very, very strong. And to play the game of cricket, I think they are already built like an ox. Mm. And I think Emma's played a lot of sport in his younger days. I think soccer has been his favorite. Yeah, and I've, I've seen him play soccer. The way he kicks the ball, he can pack a punch. Mm. He can pack a punch. I mean, when I got into the team, he was already towards the end of his. Uh, I mean, pro- probably in his home stretch. Mm. Uh, it was. more of taking care of his body if he plays a match or practice recovery was more important and uh, he had his own ways to do things and i never troubled him on that here and there he asked me a few things and uh, i will help him what was his own way of doing things i mean uh, for him primarily it was a skill practice okay so he used to bat a lot and then he believed in a lot of recovery in between uh, matches and uh, when he goes to off season i like anybody else i'll ask him do you want to follow up or something I mean, he'll ask a few things. Oh, what can I do for QL? Or what should I do for this and that? To be very honest, I will never take credit for anything he's done. Mm. He knew exactly what he was doing, and uh, even the exercise regime which he probably followed was something which he has arrived over a period of time. Gotcha. And he was self-taught. He was a natural. I think uh, he was gifted with supreme strength. and that carried him through mm. he's 40 plus and still playing mm. and uh, 
I would say that is <laughs> really gifted. Mm. That's all I could say. I mean, I will never ever take credit for something which I have not done. He had his own stuff, and uh, he knew exactly what he was doing, and he was very well sorted with the, with his own stuff. Mm. You know, you mentioned about how uh, possibly pahadis are more well built, and I completely agree. I have noticed this as well. Mm. Um, when we're talking about a country like india which is so many different geographies so many different almost micro ethnicities put together do you sense sort of genetic differences in people from different parts of the country absolutely physically yeah let's talk about from a cricket perspective so you can yeah. like give so some from a example. cricket perspective like punjabis like bumra hmm shikhar dhawan hmm virat kohli these guys are uh, i mean i think they're basically warriors Hmm. I mean, I think during war times also they were in the forefront taking everything. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I think it comes naturally for them to be that feisty and being strong, resilient, robust. I think all these things come naturally to them. Hmm. And they like fish to water when they tra- start training. It, body just gets chiselled, man. Hmm. Like Bumrah, I remember when he first came into the team, he was not the fittest. Ah, uh, okay, he was a very skilled bowler. but then i set up a nice blueprint and he said this is the direction we are going in he is another kohli he will follow to the t is a professional some years later after some training one day he put it in instagram with a six pack <laughs> shikhar dhawan is the same he loves his uh, training regime chisel strong guys and i definitely feel these guys are genetically blessed Mm. and they work very hard mm. and i think i think somewhere i noticed that i mean i've been to punjab many times these guys from delhi punjab i think they all love to work out and look good they also like the cosmetic part mm. no 100% uh, aesthetics are a part of being punjabi i don't know whether it's got to do with the geography but they all come the same mold <laughs> yeah yeah 100% um There's also a lot of teamwork, uh, like as in they're all team players at least. Yeah. Maybe I'm just batting on behalf of all Punjabis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you say that there's a role of dairy as well? Uh, maybe dairy uh, from the a young. There is an uh, yeah. I think we can have this podcast till the morning. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, I mean, I think several centuries back there was a lactose mutation stuff like that. There are several papers and research written on those things, and I think a lot of people are definitely lactose intolerant. and a lot of people are lactose tolerant, tolerant also yeah. but again uh, the quality of milk again we can talk about it i think if we do that this whole podcast will be about lactose <laughs> intolerance tolerance and glucose i mean gluten intolerance and intolerance and we can go on and on specifically about dairy i mean um, punjab generally consumes a lot of dairy uh, i spoke to this guy called um, mahipal lomra in our team hmm. he's from rajasthan yeah that's what do you have he's got a proper eight pack Hmm. Proper eight pack, and it's what you had: morning paratha, milk paratha, milk evening paratha, milk night also is the same. And they have so much of ghee and butter and everything and hmm. whatever. And this is exactly what he eats. So it has worked brilliantly for him. Hmm. Uh, somebody said, "Oh, so should we change his diet?" I said, "Nothing. It <laughs> has worked brilliantly for you. Why change at all?" I only request all the young trainers. physios nutritionists strength and conditioning goes do not try to mend something which is not broken mm. okay and he's got an eight pack no where in the hell you want to interfere yeah i said boss you continue what you're doing would, would you put something very right would you put paneer in the same category same mm. if it's working for you somebody's i mean he eats a lot of paneer too mm. well, incidentally okay mm. and i tried taking a dietary recall which is very converse to what i'm thinking but it has worked brilliantly for him yeah. and if you see him he's built like a truck yeah. and why in the hell will i change i said your mother is the best dietitian for you in the world mm-hmm. follow it how do you increase a fast bowler speed but like i remember bhuvneshwar kumar had this surge in speed uh, after i think for him what we i did was i introduced him to weightlifting so it was the, just weight just weightlifting and it was just the bar barbell just a 20 kg barbell like uh, clean and jerk clean and jerk only with the barbell to start with wow and more than virat it it worked magic on bhuneshwar kumar for him it suited okay. so every a lot of uh, trainers thought for everyone i was giving weightlifting no 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 it is like uh, i have a product and i tried matching it with something it works hmm. so it is very i mean you need to take the right tool for the right boy 
got it the right athlete that's the most important thing it worked like magic for bhuneshwar kumar i think he increased his speed by almost 10k 10 mm. clicks yeah and then um, he always had the talent and then slowly from that barbell he moved to basic weights we just did so what basically i tried doing was i wanted to introduce him to power and speed strength mm. i wanted him to move weights a little faster light weights with explosive that worked like magic for him i think brettley has said that we had brettley on the show he said that he used to just do light weights uh high reps and explosive movements if you train slow you become slow if you train fast you become fast as simple as that but again this thumb rule doesn't work for everyone mm. that's what as i grow older what the one thing i understood is i don't have any confirmation biases mm. like we say horses for courses let the horse come then i'll decide the course you know why are we seeing an umran malik now you know after so many years of cricket being in india why is there a bowler who's like so fast in 2020 this way, in the last 4 5 years there are a lot of young indian bowlers are bowling 140 plus now 140 plus in this ipl became 145 plus a lot mm. of them are bowling 145 plus so umran malik probably is the quickest in that mm. there was a time when indian bowlers were not bowling that quick so if somebody bowls 140 they were looking like express wow somebody is bowling 140 that 140 now the new bounty has become bumrah's bowl 150 already mm. in, i think in perth test match in 2017 yeah. or 18 just that umran malik is doing it consistently mm. so he just raised the bar a little and i have no idea about what he has done <laughs> he's coming from kashmir and uh, I, the only thing i heard from dale stain was he was very excited seeing him somebody steaming in and bowling quick day in day out even in the nets i believe he steams in that, and uh, my only mean sort of negative thought my only passive thought in my mind is oh my god he's bowling really quick hope he does not have a stress reaction in the near future mm. i'm sure they take very good care of him and he's in safe hands and uh, if you can nurture him this fellow is going to be a national treasure do you think i mean feel free not to answer this do you think there's ever been any form of steroid use in cricket ever i don't think so i have i have definitely not come across anything i don't think the cricketers are still aware of that fact. <laughs> <laughs> i think the max they have gone is creatine <laughs> oh okay okay let's talk about creatine and cricket because creatine it's helped me so much in my weight training i mean two things i uh, definitely i if you ask me this 10 years back i was a check practitioner i will talk on organic food sure now definitely two supplements you have to use is one is creatine one is whey protein okay mm-hmm. not plant protein uh, again it depends on i mean uh, the best way to find out which protein works for you put this uh, super sapiens on ultra human and consume whey protein and see how much your glycemic index goes up the one which doesn't go up and stays balanced is the one for you and post consuming it there should not be much of bloating some mm. of them have bloating this is also pimple problems related and to also some of them are not okay with whey concentrate mm. they are only okay with isolate. Uh, isolate some of them are okay only with hydrolyzed whey mm. so it depends on what suits you and some of them are okay only with vegan sort of protein yeah. plant protein pea protein again you need to shop and see what works for you from a cosmetic perspective this is what i have figured that a uh, lot of people are at, especially indian genetics for some reason in urban centers of course it's because of a bunch of reasons but whey protein enhances pimples and acne as well so a lot mm-hmm. of young kids are kind of moving towards plant protein for the this. same reason why see worse also i've seen as in? like i've given uh, vegan nutrition for a lot of people and they said doesn't suit me oh okay i'm getting allergies mm. i'm getting i mean one of our uh, clients had reddening all over the body so then they had to shift him to normal whey protein mm. so i've seen both, both sides both sides yeah you know i love that basu shankar himself is talking about supplements on the show uh we still living in a generation of um indian kids where they are struggling to convince their parents about supplements in general i strongly feel especially in india where we are primarily vegetarian throughout the week there is room for supplements in your diet if you can afford it and say if it's out of your budget at least have eggs you know at least have uh, and if you're pure vegetarian figure out what vegetarian protein sources are but chase protein requirements very important um, asians in general asians i mean uh, i mean they don't a, consume as much uh, protein as the western counterparts mm. and more so in the subcontinent what would you like to tell indian parents who are not allowing their kids to take supplements and your you've trained virat kohli himself you've trained ms dhoni these kind of people what would you like to say protein in every meal protein and good fats i would say when i say good fats the good old butter fruit if you can afford it 
consume it as much as possible mm. every day also as well a butter fruit a day keeps a doctor away it's not that no it's not actually apple mm, what butter, butter fruit? fruit butter fruit avocado oh okay 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 avocado mm. avocado is a dream fruit and on top of that eggs if you can't afford meat every day at least eggs worst case you can't afford this tofu mm. okay that's relatively cheaper dal okay choose any food items which is good in fats and protein every mm. meal because whether we like it or not from morning to evening all we do is consume carbohydrates have you have you seen cricketers following ketogenic diets and all this they do try a few diets one diet which does not has not worked i would say has not worked is intermittent fasting has not worked i don't think it works for athletes because uh, they lose muscle mass when somebody loses muscle mass when i say lean body mass if they lose that i lose my shit okay uh, well. if you lose lean if you lose muscle mass what happens your ability to produce force goes down drastically mm. and that is the last thing you want as an athlete Mm. you need to produce force i mean intermittent fasting is i think is for general clients yeah i mean uh, you, you can try it out on odd occasions i mean as an athlete your body composition is supposed to be in good state if it is not <laughs> then probably you can try it for a short while but if you're losing muscle mass stop mm. your job is to produce force on a field of sport yeah 100%. and you can't afford to compromise on that mm Let's speak about creatine, sir. Um, do cricketers in the modern course, Indian team yeah, use creatine? Of course, everyone's on creatine. I think most of them are aware, and most of them are consuming in the right doses, and uh, they are pretty cognizant about how to use it. In fact, they can give you how to. They can give you a lecture on how to use it also. You, so, in when you're supplementing with creatine, some people take on a phase of loading where they take 10 grams ish. I would say what I do. I mean, I initially introduce them five grams with breakfast. Okay. The reason with breakfast is. I mean, I like to add creatine with food because the rate of bioavailability is much higher mm. initially. Mm. Then second half, I I split the dosage, one with breakfast and one just before training, thirty minutes. And if you do it for two months, your cell volume goes up. You give ten grams for two months? No, no, not for two grams. First month is just five grams. Okay. And uh, the second month probably it's three and three or four and four grams. Okay. Or four grams and max is eight grams. Sometimes ten grams. That is a max of use. Yeah. Then I sort of deload. There's also a, a whole phase of drinking a lot of water that you're supposed to take while loading. I mean, uh, that's that goes without saying. You need mm. to hydrate yourself properly. But it's even more on creatine uh, when you're using creatine. Again, what happened? This hype started some years back. I mean, I don't want to get into any controversy with regards to nutritionists or physicians sure. who talk about this. But so you're the authority. So uh, let me just put that. Like also if you look at the 1980s, okay, Linford Christie, Sally Gunnell, Mark Jackson, they were the first exponents of creatine, and they all won gold medals in the Olympics. They started the creatine revolution, and ever since it has only taken off, and everyone now uses creatine, and it is absolutely safe. It has been time tested. Only request is, please do check your serum creatine levels. Blood, your blood work. Check your serum creatine levels. If you feel, if you feel there is something altering with your serum creatine levels, consult a nephrologist. Mm. That is my only disclaimer here. Otherwise, it's absolutely safe to. If you are apparently healthy adults, can consume creatine. And in my clinic, I have noticed that uh, women who come, especially from vegetarian backgrounds, they have very little creatine, and they have a lot of aches and pains. Mm. And I start giving them a dose of creatine. Their pain levels alleviate, mm. and that is a boon for me. What about phases without creatine? So, like, how do you bring your athletes off it? Like, and how long do you take them off? I say one month on, one month off, one month on, one month okay. off. Okay. I mean, and that's the way to do it. And uh, there can be a, a couple of months without creatine also. If you're, if you're a non-vegeta mm. and you're a proper meat eater, I'll I'll wean them off creatine. Mm. I'll only use it in phases. Is there a place for red meat in professional sport? All the time. Okay, <laughs> it's it's beneficial. I feel it's highly beneficial. It's not only the red meat. Please eat the good part, the fat part, everything. Eat mm. the meat in full. I'll give you an example sure. of Eskimos. Okay. Now mm. there's a good book called Good Calories, Bad Calories by Gary Tews. Yeah, yeah. The Eskimos they had only meat all their life. They never had a case of heart attack. Mm. The first Eskimo came to the city. Uh, he was introduced to burgers and pizzas and stuff like that. Had his first heart attack. Mm. 
so he was absolutely fine with huge amount of red meat mm yeah uh have to talk a little bit about yoga is it making its way to international sport yoga is very very good okay it comes from the eastern side of the world so the westerners find it very very appealing we in general i've noticed that indians are quite flexible we have the mobility thanks to indian toilet at least for the previous generation and sitting down and eating and all those things we were we are generally more mobile and flexible than the western counterparts for them flexibility and they're a little rigid some of them at least so yoga was usually beneficial for them but again in the modern uh, scientific world there are equally good methods which can actually uh, match yoga also like benefit you, of flexibility yeah like like you train with a proper coach hmm. you will definitely have several modus operandi where you improve your mobility and flexibility hmm. and uh, sometimes i say yoga is great okay i also feel don't invent new words for flexibility mm got gotcha. you it's great like it's great but if you are hyper mobile already it's highly contraindicated you can get injured probably by ah, becoming even more mobile there's something called let's say that you you try bending your little finger as it 90 degree give I yourself know. a mark the other side yeah seems like Just extend your arm and see whether it's hyper extended. Slightly, probably one mark. Mm. The other side. When you stand similarly in your knees, if it is hyper extended, and mm. if you can touch your ground flat, the ground, and see whether you can touch the thumb to the wrist. Uh, you can. No, it's about so no marks. So if the score is out of nine, if the score is more than four, you are actually contraindicated for stretching. Okay. If it is below two, then yoga will work brilliantly for you. Mm. So basically, your body stiff. So look at the body as a cycle spoke. If it is too tight, you need to loosen it. Mm. If it is too loose, you need to tighten it. Uh, people gotcha. are hyper mobile; they need to hit the gym more often. Yeah, I think there was also a study recently which spoke about just keeping your back straight. You know, with a correct posture. Uh, I think even something like. 15 minutes spent to the correct posture was shown to increase some certain amount of testosterone in this your body. This posture thing which I've gone I I've, I've been a victim of it for 10 years. <laughs> Honestly speaking uh how much of this postural correction works I don't know. Mm. I've tried it for 10 years and what I noticed is again let's not reinvent new words for strength training. Do proper strength training, okay? Do your warm up properly, do your recovery properly. Look at it more holistically, mm. okay? get your nutrition in good state sleep well mm. okay the posture thing oh forward hit i mean i worked so on so many clients oh you got a poke chin you need to retract you having a sort of a thoracic curvature oh like, like quasi modo you need to straighten up retract if you have the right program with the right mix the ingredient has to be in the right state uh, if you can do that consistently again i always finish with good nutrition and good sleep wake cycle you will reach your goal eventually mm. again i am telling you you need to have the right dose of strength coach gotcha. the rep range the number of sets the selection of exercises is it really helping you is it integrated or is it isolated mm. if you are giving isolated why isolated if you are giving integrated why integrated if you can ask a why for everything you put in a program and if it can um, sort of result in a good uh, result with your clients that is everything speaking about recovery and these things so uh, one more genuine cricket fan question why don't we see so many seam bowling all rounders in india like now there's a hardik pandya vijay shankar um, but you know why hasn't there been more like you you almost always see these seam bowling all rounders in england south africa australia new zealand there's a slight lack of them in india is that because of the kind of coaching these kids are getting at uh, their cricket uh, coaching centers when they're growing up is it a fitness thing can it be changed uh, through fitness i will stick to my lane with regards to fitness uh, definitely demanding for an all rounder no doubt about it but if you look at history from the 70s itself all rounders are always rare you can mm. here and there you get one and back in the days there was four guys at one time like imran khan was there kapil dev was there mm. richard adley ian botham after that there's been a lull never had a genuine all rounder i mean this is just a spectator talking about this and now you have hardik um, even ben stokes here yeah. 
and of jacques callis i mean those type of people are rare they mm. come once in 10 years 15 years i think it happens or it doesn't that's it i don't there is i don't think there is a rhyme or reason for it do you think it's in the psychology of the person like he wants to do everything he wants to bowl he wants to bat probably probably you're right he wants to be the shinosher of all the ice <laughs> have you worked with hardik yeah, very much very what's much. he like as a person a great guy he's a great guy yeah. i mean uh, i remember uh, 2019 world cup uh, it was post ipl i think and uh, you know so obviously a lot of matches he said basa please get me through this world cup i need to be fit mm. got him through and uh, he's a great guy and uh, easy to work with him mm. if you convince him again he'll do whatever you want him to do mm. and obviously the demand of an all rounder is very different and understanding his body and uh, he has not played much of junior cricket so suddenly he has been catapulted to international levels and the loads are much higher and he has to do day in day out i think he's getting used to it now mm-hmm. and uh, of course fast bowlers and all rounders are all going to get injured every now and then that's part and parcel of the game character wise what do you think has helped him kind of reach the top now, extreme self belief mm. extreme self belief champion mm. captain material i mean i've not seen that part because uh, i've not been in the team now for i mean time will tell of course with IPL has done magic now this year yeah. with Gujarat Titans so mm. he must be doing something right um another player who a lot of cricket fans have their eyes on is Rishabh Pant so i remember uh, seeing rishabh in sri lanka he came to the nidhas trophy i think even before that to west indies in nidhas trophy i remember telling him that you know you are extraordinary gymnast please call your gymnastic coach and thank him for what you're doing now he was like flummoxed i said what he can do a keep off he can do a front flip he can do a back flip you must have seen it in television yeah. sir and he's got the explosive ability because of i think he's done a lot of gymnastics in his formative years mm. and uh, same thing i've told shriram no sridhar and shriram is a coach for rcb in australian team his son he, uh, wanted to start training i said shriram put him in gymnastics and within a year i think this boy won a sort of a small tournament in gymnastics he can do the, all those things and apparently he's playing very well now mm. i think gymnastics also play a major role in development as an athlete and not all of them will get the opportunity to do that but if you can do that at a very young age nothing like it and probably that has helped a lot for rishabh pant yeah um i did a lot of judo when i was younger built up my legs helped a lot with my balance and uh, there was a lot of gymnastics involved i'm assuming that it's the same thing that like it's your lower body strength that so, gets built and your balance and uh, rishabh pand if you notice he's very acrobatic because of that he can jump he can mm. flip he can do anything but in batting do you think that helps i'm not a connoisseur of batting but i'm sure all these things help mm. i mean i always believe in multi directional approach to life itself i think a multi directional approach to sport is definitely the need of the hour mm. i mean you play five sports and then you pick up one sport you will def- abd williams mm. classic example i am sure he could have represented south africa in tennis i have spoken to myself and uh, i got it out of his mouth he has run sub 11 400 meters and very shyly said yeah maybe he'll say that <laughs> very shy to talk about himself he can play excellent golf he plays squash you name it he can excellent any sport i think in pretoria the place where he grew up there was, a, there was an opportunity for him to play a lot of sport and what an athlete Mm. he's called 360 for some reason mm. and i've seen it with my own eyes some of the knocks he's played more than the cricket part the way he executes the shots ha oh, it's breathtaking what's the physical angle of that like why can't all players be that mr 360 i'll tell you i mean a few facts because i'm as i told you can run sub 11 400 meters not now probably in his eight days i am sure he can run a 5k sub 20 minutes mm. and if you ask him to do a vertical jump probably he'll jump 75 cm and he can hit the ball out of the stadium and suddenly off the hook you tell him go play a golf field play a handicap of 5 or 6 i don't know mm. uh, he can, if you ask him to play table tennis he might have never held a racket straight away he'll come and hit a forehand mm. by playing oh have you read this book called range by david epstein no uh, in one hand he talks about roger federer in the other hand he talks about tiger wood tiger wood is all about isolation specialization early mm. Roger Federer is all about playing multi sport in Asia. He played a lot of sports and then he finally got into tennis. And we have seen the results of both. Same thing with ABD Williams. 
he is probably gone the roger federer way played multi sport probably would have represented uh, south africa in rugby or hockey or whatever whichever sport he wanted to play but then he chose cricket finally and then is a is a phenomena is not mm. a cricket is a phenomena I mean the economic way of looking at it is now the rich kids and the kids on the other end of spectrum God. probably have the uh, opportunities to do this because the other end of the spectrum is in empty grounds small town india rich kids have turfs it's all the kids in the middle middle class india will take a hit um probably right um speaking about middle class india got to talk about a country and a team that's right next to us What's gone right for Pakistan cricket, according to you? Do you think they saw Virat Kohli got inspired to take up the whole fitness side of things, oh. and that's why the team has started performing so well lately? No, they reached a World Cup final, yes, for sure. They did definitely well, and uh, many congratulations to them. But then uh, time will tell. It is, I mean, uh, they say one cuckoo doesn't make a summer, mm. <laughs> so we need to wait and watch. Do you notice anything about Babar Azam's fitness All in specific? He's batting brilliantly, and uh, I can only tell it from. more from what i've seen on television is batting brilliantly i don't know how much of it is fitness i really don't know are you able to break down visually when you see someone's game are you able he's to always see? been batting very well just that he's coming of age no no are you able to break down someone's fitness i can only say that i visually i could see i could see virat kohli i saw that personally i could see that i saw bhuvneshwar kumar personally i could see that bumrah personally i saw that Okay. So Kale Rahul coming of age personally I've seen that that yes mm. it made a difference mm. for some of them you may not be able to apparently see it mm. but these uh, examples which I told you I could visually I could see the difference okay um, I've seen it for Dinesh Karthik mm. visually let's let's talk about Dinesh Karthik so there's this whole he's kind of become a revolution on social media as well I think there's not a single cricket fan in the country who doesn't adore Dinesh yeah. Karthik. So what's gone right for him? How's he sustained so long? I remember seeing him as one of my earliest memories in cricket. Like I started watching cricket properly in two thousand one, two thousand two. He was playing in the under nineteen World Cup. He was the keeper that time, and it's two thousand twenty two now. Yeah, he's like uh, I would say, <laughs> uh, he's like the Benjamin Button. As he grows old, <laughs> he's getting younger yeah. and younger, getting fitter and fitter, and he's <laughs> like old wine is getting better and better. Yeah, and I think he's in a very very happy space now. He's recently blessed with twins, mm. and uh, his wife Deepika Palikal. I know her very well. From, I know them from age of twelve, and he's in a happy space and surrounded by friends. And I think uh, he went through some rough patches in his personal side also. And right now, I think he's on the other side. Everything is green now, and I think with regards to his performance on the field, I think uh, a lot of credit goes to. Abhishek Nair, I think, has mm. done a lot of work with him, and uh, on top of that, I think he's enjoying it now. Yeah, he's 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 in a bliss. What we call it is a zone. Mm. He's in a zone now. I think happiness has something to do with recovery and performance. So, I can't put my finger and say that will happen for everyone, mm. but I think it has worked for Dinesh. But the very fact that I never thought he's going to come back to the Indian team, honestly, if you had asked me one year back, I'd say, ah, come on, it's a dream. I thought it was over. but this man is like uh, he can repeatedly pursue his dream and uh, i think uh, his ability to bounce back i mean there was a period where he lost out on the race because of dhoni and the dhoni era he lost out a lot and to take that hit and come back work 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 he came to indian team as an opener some years back mm. then he lost that then again he came back as a fini- sort of a batsman keeper back up something like that This time as a finisher, the number of avatars he has taken to come back in the time. I mean, we heard about Jimmy Amarnath doing the number of comebacks back in the days. I think Dinesh Karthik must have done thirty to forty times comebacks to the Indian team. Yeah. But now I think uh, all his dreams and his what to say has come true. Finally, he's vindicated. He feels that he's got the tag of one of the greatest finishers in the game. Mm. And knowing Dinesh Karthik very well, he will be at peace with that. Yeah, I mean, if he had finished off his career without doing this part now, he would have been a very upset man. And yeah. I think a lot of credit goes to him and his entourage. And uh, I would give a lot of credit to uh, Nair also. Yeah, because he believes in him and he has delivered for him. So it's a team. In football, there's a saying called "the streets will never forget." Mm. So they name these really hipster footballers who were icons. There's a guy called Dimitri Payet. Um. There's a guy called Michu. You know these iconic footballers. 
Dinesh Karthik is a cricketer that the streets will he never forget. He does most of his training here in Mumbai only. Mm. I mean, I, I know his uh, typical day. He's a mad punk. He'll bat from morning 9 to evening 4 o'clock and mm. uh, he's a person who believes in volume. But his madness now has got a method. And the right, I mean, the right age of cricket, I would say is 36 or something, 37 or whatever. Uh, I think he's matured as a person. He used to be hyper when he was young. Now he's a lot more calmer. Still that little bit of hyper thing is there. That is Dinesh Karthi. You can't take that out of him. But I think he's, he understands the game as a whole now. Mm. I mean, playing the game with talent is one. Understanding the entire game, falling in love with that entire process. I think he has fallen in love with the process and he's an out and out cricket nut. He can talk and live and breathe cricket 24 hours. Mm. I tell him sometimes, Dinesh, you talk only cricket 24 hours. And apart from that, he's a very interesting character. He can talk about movies, he can talk about <laughs> trends. And uh, if, by any chance, if you go to, for shopping with him, you can be rest assured that your pockets will be empty. He will <laughs> ensure that you buy truckloads of things for your own self. <laughs> and he can sell ice to Eskimos. <laughs> Dinesh Karthik needs to be on the podcast. And I'll tell you why. There's a lot to learn from him. Everyone's aware of what happened in his personal life some years ago. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young men in the country need to hear a story like that from the horse's mouth. I think he's in a, uh, to put, uh, to cut a long story short, I think he's evolved as a person. Yeah. And he's in a very happy space and his understanding of the sport and uh, his purpose of life. I think he has converged all these things in a package and he's just enjoying his day. All sports fans in India will agree when I say that Dinesh Karthik is one of the greatest sports stories this country has seen. What's he going to do after cricket, according to you, knowing him so well? He'll be one of the best commentators in the world, mm. without a doubt. Okay. Yeah. And remember last year… In the, the interviews in uh, England. Interviews in England and uh, I think Michael Holding told him, oh, sort of, is a Versace of mm. <laughs> commentary field or whatever. <laughs> and he came with the 27 suitcases with 40 odd suits and stuff like that. Wow. What was it? I mean, I'm trying to remember, uh, Michael Holding had a… I took a little uh, dig at him with regard to his, all his dressing and fashion. Uh, he'll become a fashion icon of the commentary world. Mm. And he comes with some interesting anecdotes. And he's a good storyteller. Oh, he mm. can be a very good storyteller. Yeah. I think uh, personally, again, this is very outside perspective. But when you look at someone like Dinesh Karthik, you learn about mental toughness. We had Raina on the podcast as well. That's what I gained from. So every podcast teaches me one thing. In this podcast, I learned the power of muscles. <laughs> but uh, with with Raina, with I learned... Karthik, I'll tell you a very interesting. The bugger is so mentally strong. Mm. But I'll tell you a flip side. He's got a lot of... Uh, I wouldn't say superstitions. He would say deja vu's or uh -huh. routines or whatever. Um, he's mentally very strong, no doubt. But by... By 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 a chance, you say, Dinesh, you're batting. By, if you tell him you're batting great, you're going to score a hundred. Probably he will stop saying hello to you. <laughs> <laughs> if you no. go tell him you're batting shit, yeah. you're going to get out early today. He'll hug you. Yeah. <laughs> he likes this sort of uh, opposite way mm -hmm. of approaching things. And uh, before he goes to bat, he will pick one guy in the team and he'll talk to him. Mm. If you see him throw the series, he'll be the same person. He'll sit next to him, talk to him. And he'll call it routines and I'll make a lot of fun of him. <laughs> we take the mickey out of him all the time. And uh, that's the beauty of going on a tour, taking the mickey out of him. And uh, he loves the storytelling and we have a great time. You know, I have a very dastardly theory um, and a lot of cricket fans would actually agree to this, that ODI is gradually we're seeing less, you know, on an international level. I mean, there's data to back this. And cricket is generally becoming test cricket and T20s. Maybe that's all right. That's an evolution of a sport. Like even in basketball, we saw the three-pointer revolution mm. because of Steph Curry. Now the whole sport is different. That opened up the sport. Therefore, it made more way room for slashers like Giannis and all that. Now, even cricket has gone through a big evolution because of the IPL. Like we saw kind of roles changing up. You know, like everyone thought that spinners would become irrelevant, but spinners became more important than ever. Leg spinners, etc. Nowadays, it's this whole angle of spinners should also know how to bat a little bit. Um, but... Overall, sir, where do you see the sport going in the long term? Uh, both from a fitness perspective and probably specifically for the Indian cricket team. Um, keeping the new crop in mind, people like Shubman Gil, Prithvi Shaw, Ishan Kishan, Rishabh Pant, uh, the bowlers, you know, um, all these guys, Umran Malik, Mohamed Siraj. 
Where do you no, think I, cricket is going? I mean, I'm not a, definitely a cricket expert, but uh, having been with the team and having been associated with the sport for so long, I think straight question to you is: You prefer watching a T20 or a Test match? T20. And uh, if you ask this question to 120 year olds, what will be the answer? Always say T20. I think I'll stop here. Mm. I think uh, T20 cricket is going to definitely dominate the future. I think test cricket will be there. Mm. Definitely uh, they be there. I think the future is T20 cricket. Mm. Yeah, there is an audience for test cricket as well in as India. Well. But then um, IPL is exciting, very very exciting, and in, in, I mean especially this year. Every match went to the wire. Almost every match, and uh, there must be a reason people are signing up to watch every match. And uh, look at the interest, the TRP ratings and stuff like that. It is just unbelievable. And uh, at the end of the day, you have to cater to what the audience want. You know, if the audience want more of it, who are we to say anything? <laughs> as a conditioning coach do you now have to care a lot more about endurance because there's that much more cricket to be played is that where the sport uh, is going i think i would rather put it this way if it is i, have, I mean i have clearly understood cricket now get them prepared for test cricket or t20 two different sport according mm. to me that is over five days so i need to take care of so many other things here it is explosive fast and furious <laughs> that is like more like a Thousand five hundred meters, five thousand meters run. Gosh, there are portions where you do sprinting, mm. but this you need to endure five days. Slow twitch I, muscle fibers. I wouldn't. So the sport itself. I mean, uh, this again. I want to clear this. Cricket is an highly anaerobic sport. It is a fast sport. Even if it's a test cricket, I'll tell you every event in a in a test match also cannot last more than nine to ten seconds. Mm. That is three runs. Mm. Most of the time, let's say that you're a bowler, you run in for four seconds. Bowl a ball. As a batsman, you take two three seconds. So any event in a cricket field does not last more than ten or eleven seconds. That is if you run three runs. Most of the other events are within five to six seconds only. Hmm. So you repeat it over ninety overs or fifty overs or twenty overs, and there is recovery period in between thirty odd seconds, twenty five odd seconds in between every ball. But the actual event is within five to ten seconds only. So that is. a lactic system that is your fast system mm. so you definitely need to train your body to be fast and if you can do it repeatedly over 90 overs then it is called power endurance mm. gotcha <laughs> where is the indian cricket team going do you like the they are going to dominate throw? world sport mm. the way this country is going i mean in fact sometimes i feel sorry for other sport every street has got tons and tons of cricketers actually even weekend cricketers blue star cricketers they practice as if they are professionals even mm. corporate tournaments they all practice quite a bit even a corporate cricketer who has no future in cricket just to have that bragging rights on a sunday <laughs> night he practices 4 to 5 hours a week mm. cricket is a religion in this country and uh, there will be more number of people playing the sport the footfalls playing the sport is going to increase exponentially in the years to come India will have four to five international teams if possible. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'm going to say something dangerous and say, what if we become an NBA style system all over the world where it's IPL throughout the year? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be. I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> yeah, very interesting uh, idea. But Basu Shankar sir, thank you. Absolute thank you. dream talking you. to you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I want to give you a small gift. Yes, and it's right there behind you. Thank you, sir. It wow. It is my pleasure to give you my. Made an effort of a book under two hundred. Thank you, sir. This means a lot. Really means a lot. Uh, I mean, you've been like an idol for me. Uh, you know, when my career began. So just speaking to you is a huge deal. You being in my house is a huge deal. I will make you sign this copy, though. Sure. So this uh, book, I I took almost two years. This was an effort during my uh, touring days with the Indian team. I mean, I just kept writing in the side note as a side note. Then once I finished my tenure, I sat down for six months. the editing took longer i am telling you writing a book is very easy but <laughs> proof reading oh my god mm. it, i understood what is proof reading after that mm. no i'm seeing it and it's a, you know they say a book is a reflection of the author's energy uh, i can see how systematic you are and that's the sense i got from this podcast as well long term if you ever want to achieve anything in life it is going to be an outcome of systems Absolutely. and i feel that whether you're talking about virat kohli the indian cricket team uh, this whole fitness wave we're seeing all over the world of cricket 
it's your systems that have been very much responsible for at least an aspect of that wave so so thank you from the cricket fan and all of us have madness and have method too amazing bye so shankar sir thank you means thank a lot you. that was the episode for today again biology health fitness these are subjects that we haven't really covered on this podcast when i began the podcast health lifestyle was supposed to be central themes for me unfortunately we've only covered it on some episodes with luke cutinio that's about to change i hope you all enjoyed this particular episode with basu shankar if you're a cricketer who's played in the ranji trophy in the ipl and if you're watching this i hope this episode helped you we have done a series on sports conditioning on this channel do go check it out we'll link it down below also why don't you make an appearance on the ranveer show we need to bring in more personalities from the world of sports we have a hindi podcast as well go check that out but for now make sure you follow us on spotify trs is a spotify exclusive which means that every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world trs is only beginning its journey and i hope you're gaining value from every single episode namaste we'll see you soon